Well, as a scientist, I look at every whale necropsy as an opportunity to study a species that we cannot easily access any other way. So we've had 19 strandings from March 31st until now, and we're all working together to try to investigate what's happening. Whenever a whale strands, we have a huge email list of people that get alerted right away. Our teams had a specified meeting time. We all got together, packed up the trucks, and we drove out to the beach. The Marine Mammal Center, our collaboration with them is really amazing. Like, you have a large whale, you can't just send four or five people to it. You need a lot of people. And by bringing two organizations together with people who are specialized in this, we really do um, a good job out here in responding to large whales. The first steps are to take a series of photos of the carcass from all different angles and different spots to see if there's particular areas that might look suspicious or that we might want to focus on later. In this case, it was a humpback, so we wanted to get good pictures of the tail flukes because they're always raising their tail flukes and that's how they're identified as individuals. And then we take measurements. The main purpose of a necropsy is to determine the cause of death of the animal if it's possible. And so we're systematically opening the animal up to look for any signs of injury or disease that we might see inside. So the Marine Mammal Center kind of focuses on the organs because they're more the soft tissue experts. They take samples of all the organs that they can find and they bring those samples back to the lab to see if they can see some cause of death or injury or disease. We're looking for obvious signs of trauma. In a large whale, you would look for uh, hemorrhaging in the muscle, and that indicates that the animal was alive when it suffered a trauma. And then we also look for broken bones. So for every animal that we respond to, we enter the data into the National Stranding Network database. In 2013, a group of people got a working group together to look at the effects that ships have on whales because ship strike is one of the leading causes of death for large whales. So they were able to use those data to inform the management decisions as far as where the shipping lanes are and they were able to make some changes including a voluntary slowdown encouragement for ships coming into San Francisco Bay and Los Angeles. So gray whales are going through what's called an unusual mortality event. It started in 2019 with a high number of gray whales being seen dead and in poor body condition. Gray whales do this crazy migration where they feed in the summer in Alaska, they bulk up, and then they swim all the way to Baja, California, Mexico to give birth and mate. And then they swim all the way back to Alaska for the next summer. And during that time period, they are, we don't believe that they eat very much, if at all. Climate change could be playing a role in the fact that if they're not able to find the high quality food that they need when they're in Alaska, that may be an indication that the climate is shifting. We still haven't found one specific cause of death that's consistent throughout all of the strandings, but we have not ruled out disease or infection. And so the, the investigation is ongoing.